local mystery that's gone unsolved for more than two decades. Who is she and where did she come from? In 1991, a young woman died in a fiery truck crash on I-5. She's never been identified and investigators need your help. Our Amy Frazier takes us inside tonight's Coin 6 Unsolved. wonder who is she, where'd she come from, what were her circumstances that led her to be where she was that day. She was a passenger in a semi-truck traveling south on I-5 near Kalama, a town nestled in the shadow of Mount St. Helens. A few years ago we gave her the name of Helen Doe. We were tired of calling her unidentified remains and due to the proximity to Mount St. Helens where the crash occurred, she was given the name Helen Doe. May 14, 1991, there was a backup on the freeway. The semi-truck driver and his young woman passenger were going full speed. And unfortunately, the driver of the semi wasn't able to stop in time and ran into the truck in front of it that was stopped. There was a massive fire. Well, the truck driver that was rear-ended, he explained it as like a bomb went off. Right in here, we have what's left of the cab of the second truck. That the one our Helen Doe was a passenger in. There was many people that tried to get in and help the driver and the passenger, and they were just unable to. Washington State Patrol investigators identified the dead truck driver as 26-year-old Lester Harvel of Missouri, but the trucking company had no record of a passenger. And somewhere along the way, and we don't know where, he picked her up as probably a hitchhiker or at a rest area and was just giving her a ride, but we haven't been able to determine when or where. Investigators have mapped his fuel receipts over the one-week trip. He started in Missouri and drove through Kansas, Colorado, Wyoming, Utah, Idaho, Oregon, and then Washington. <laughs> Helen Doe's remains were buried in an unmarked grave at the Longview Memorial Park and Cemetery. I believe that the trucking company paid to give her a funeral and a burial site. And from there, she just sat in an unmarked grave for many years. But she wasn't forgotten. A Washington State Patrol detective refused to give up, knowing modern technology could lead to answers. He'd worked on it throughout the years, and he wanted to figure out who she was before he retired. In early 2014, Helen Doe's remains were exhumed from her grave. So to get her remains out of the ground, be able to find, hopefully obtain some DNA out of the bones or the teeth that were in that coffin was a huge step for us. And once that occurred, we were able to get that DNA and get it into the system. So far, there's no DNA match, but investigators remain hopeful. If we can get one person to say, wait a minute, my sister went missing or my daughter went missing, my cousin, my friend, and that can reach out and put a sample of their DNA into CODIS so that into the missing person's database, we'll get a hit because we have her DNA. And there are other clues. Okay, well, I went down to the medical examiner's office and had a look at the skull. Forensic artist Natalie Murray of Texas made this sketch of what the young woman may have looked like. You know, I think somebody's going to somebody's going to know her when they see it. And hopefully someone will finally see it. Investigators believe she's in her 20s and Native American. Witnesses say she had a long, dark ponytail and a feather earring. There's a space between her bottom two front teeth, and she likely walked with a limp from scoliosis. So that's something someone might have noticed. Investigators say even the smallest tip could make all the difference in learning her name and finding her family. Until then, Helen Doe remains here at the Cowlitz County Coroner's Office. I don't think anybody should spend eternity sitting on a shelf in a dark room at the medical examiner's office. Everybody needs to be able to go home. In Cowlitz County, Amy Frazier, Coin 6 News.